again, you mentioned something about the disparity, right, between upper and, and lower, which is measured in the, oh my God, I can't believe I even remember this crap, the, the Gini coefficient, and it's, in the United States, it's, it's been widening every year. It's insane. I was actually having a debate with someone the other day about it, and like 30.5% have less of people in the United States have less than $1,000. So when someone says like the economy is doing really great, and they're in that 38.5% and they only have $1,000 in their bank account. It's like, but you're not benefiting from that. Like the only people who are benefiting that are the people who own assets and their assets are getting inflated by a Fed that's keeping rates low artificially. And you're not getting any of those. So the benefits are all going to a certain group. And if you don't make it to that group, I, I believe that we have one decade left bef before your family tree becomes either the working class um, because of technology and, and the other shifts that are ha either the working class, the investor class, and you owe it to your family over the next 10 years to build as much wealth as possible, or else the gap from you to be able to get to the bottom to the top, the American I dream idea is going to be, it's going to be gone. Like it's going to be virtually gone. Like I don't know how you're going to do it when technology is going to wipe out a, a ton of jobs and you're going to be the work. You're going to be like the worker bee fixing the machines, or you're going to be the person who owns the technology for the machines. And there's really not going to, there's going to be like two, two sides of it. Um, which going to, I just, I don't see it going any other way because it's already moving that direction so fast. Oh, yeah. there's, there's already a gravitational pull. There's, you know, already a term that they no longer call them tech hubs. They call them brain hubs. Got and it. it's, uh, it's, it, you know, even the United States of America is being pulled apart where population like Austin is a great, you know, area, right. Where it's, where it's just, there's this gravitational pull by the, t the tech companies because Silicon Valley is so, is already so saturated and there's other right san diego raleigh, you know, raleigh north yeah. carolina right even even like there's new york there's dc but then it's the entire population is going to be pulled and yeah that there's going to be essentially those with you know software jobs and those who are servicing the software jobs and what's that going to do for your kids right like if you don't make it your next gen like if your kids are going to school in 10 years and you didn't make it to get them to own real estate that's in their name or be able to get them the education that they need so they're gonna be able to survive and thrive in the next 20 years. Like, what are you gonna do? I, I just think it's gonna be, and people are gonna be so aware of it because they're gonna know that, they're not gonna know that they have not because we haven't really felt it yet because the tech changes have been so dramatic that you can still do everything that you wanna do and have a really comfortable life. But I think like after a certain point of time, people are going to realize like, oh, they're going to like exactly the same conversation that we're having is like, they're going to wake up. They're going to wake yeah. up and be like, oh, I'm on the other side of this. And like, I just really didn't understand the issue until it like really starts showing up. That's it. And so like, if, you know, if we, if we bring it home, it's, it's how does somebody put themselves in a position to be in that group, right? It's own a business owner mindset, focus on the bottom line, focus on profitability because it's profitability that's going to drive your lifestyle and it's also going to drive your investments. You cannot invest with GCI. That's right. <laughs> that's what we're talking about. Like real estate sales is to get cash and then the cash is to pay to your living expenses, your savings, and then you know, you need to minimize your, your monthly expenses for stuff that doesn't add value, which I think people should review monthly. And then once you get to the investing side, like invest in real estate, like it's an amazing cash flow asset, it has price oh approval. God, yes. It oh doesn't God, even yes. matter, it doesn't even matter if the market's high or low at this point. I mean, actually affordability, I, I think I saw was like the hot, the best it's ever been. It's more affordable than ever because interest rates are Because of the interest rates, exactly. Yeah, it's you, just like you, you gotta do it, it and if you're not buy, rich, people get rich because they buy assets and have other people paid off. Like why would, and it's not a complicated thing. You can read it in any of the books. Dave. And you know, that's the thing. It's like, if you were a shoe salesman and you knew that, the sh that you were selling shoes and those shoes were going to appreciate and, or somebody could would pay you to wear those shoes, but you still own those shoes. And then you can like have the people bring them back and somebody else pick it up. Like, like, would you sell any shoes? No, you would you would just have a bunch of rental shoes. 